Hi, Mashies, and welcome to another episode of Let's Make a Mashable. My name's Meg, and I make Mashables, where I combine an animal with another animal or another element or an inanimate object. But today it's going to be two animals, and I'm so excited to see what it's going to be. Thank you so much for everyone who came and supported the first episode. Let me tell you, that was a hurdle. That was something that was just, that was, that was difficult for me. I, at the very beginning of the year, I go, I want to make a YouTube channel and I recorded something pretty quickly and then I sat on it for months because I just got really overwhelmed at the idea of, of editing and of putting myself out there on another content endeavor. But I'm very, very lucky and I have some wonderful people in my corner, including my editor, Rovai, who has come in and just been an amazing, amazing asset to to everything when it comes to uh, the YouTube channel. Also cutting out a bunch of my us because I have a lot of those. I learned that, yeah. I learned that. <laughs> but yeah, I just thank you guys so much for coming out and, and subscribing and supporting. I'm very excited to see where this channel goes. And uh, without further ado, let's make another Mashable. So we're gonna go to the random animal generator. That is the uh, randomlists.com. I'm going to just tell it to choose two animals and then we are going to see what it does. So we just press the return and oh goodness. <laughs> see, the fun challenge of Mashables is to make whatever the generator provides you, regardless of how terrifying, and I mean terrifying, it's going to be. Let me tell you, any time I have added some sort of monkey or primate, great ape, anything that resembles some sort of human, it's never cute. <laughs> it's never cute. Uh, it's a chimp chilla. <laughs> okay. Ooh. If your artwork or just even the concept of it doesn't make your eyes water. Oh my God, a chimp chilla. I'm so concerned and we should, uh, uh, you know what? Let's see what it's gonna be. The, uh, oh, the challenge that Mashables has brought to me is to not think, but to just do. The biggest rule is to just do it. What is it, the, the Shia, LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf, just like, just do it, you know, just literally just, just do, do it. it. A big thing, at least for me as an artist, was getting stuck on the idea process and getting stuck at the, what should I make? ledge and not jumping off because there's so many things that you're like, well, I want to pre-plan. I want to think of a good idea. And you, when you're at that edge, there are so many ways you can convince yourself not to jump. But artistically speaking, just, just going for it, just doing it is going to be really freeing once you start doing it. I still suffer from not trusting it. The chimp chilla, I'm very nervous for. So let's get some reference material. And now a word from our sponsors while Meg gets reference material. We don't have sponsors. Oh, look at this cute little baby bean. Uh, I'm gonna ruin it. Okay, so putting human ears on this is going to be traumatizing for us all, but we're gonna do it together. So just looking for kind of an idea of what is very classic chimpanzee. Also, fun side fact, Jane Goodall is my absolute hero and has been my hero since I was a small, small, small bean. I absolutely love chimpanzees because of her. So if you have not watched anything about her, you absolutely should because she is an absolute treat. Like sitting. Uh, chimpchilla, this is gonna be. <laughs> Chinchillas are absolutely adorable. And chimpanzees are adorable in their own right. Together, not so much. There's a good photo. Oh, I am just so concerned for this. Okay, now we are going to put all of our reference images in one thing and name your folders. So first and foremost, we look at the two individual animals and think of what are the really important elements of each animal. So with a chinchilla, they are incredibly fluffy. If you've never touched a chinchilla, 
I'm so sorry for you. They are so soft and their fur is so dense that they actually shouldn't ever get a water bath because they can't fully dry and so there can be irritation and like mold that grows really close to their skin because they can't dry. So what they do is they, they cleanse themselves in ash baths, which is amazing and super, super stinking cute to see. You just put like a little pile of ash and they, and they, and they, they, they spin in it. Honestly, thinking about it now, it's kind of, it's kind of metal. Anyway, why did I, how did I make chinchillas terrifying? Anyway, so we've got, I'm gonna look at the elements that make a chinchilla a chinchilla. Fluffy. Uh, their pose is very, they kind of have like these tiny, tiny, itty bitty little feetsies. Um, but then they have very kangaroo like bottom feet. They also have a very curly tail. Uh, their little cheeks I'm seeing, their ears are a big one. Um, whiskers. So I think that the elements that we're going to use would be one, the fluffiness, which is going to be kind of hard to translate, but we'll got, well, we got this. Um, the ears are a big one, but so are the chimpanzees. So we're, whew, this is going to be, see, if we add chimpanzee ears, it's going to be weird. If we add chinchilla ears, it's going to be cute. So it just, you know, it just depends. And then the tail. So I think that that's going to be that element. But then, looking at the chimpanzee, I mean, obviously, I think the first and foremost is just very how human they are. Their opposable thumbs and their little feet and hands are absolutely just categorically, that is what makes a chimpanzee or a great ape a great ape because they have the opposable thumbs. So um, I think also when you're looking at their face shape, they have a very, it kind of looks like they're wearing goggles. And then they have this little mouth right here. So this shape right here, let me see if I can do something brighter. This shape right here, almost kind of like a weird like clover with the nose and the mouth. That is a very chimpanzee shape. So having that as their face is going to be, to me, very important because that's, that's very telling that that is a chimpanzee. Uh, and then their ears, their very human, adorable ears went on them, but on other things, not so much. And uh, they have their little gray whiskers. But I think the, the hands and feet, the, the shape of their face, which is kind of just three circles, if you really look at it, and then their ears. Those are the those are the main elements of the chimpanzee that I'm going to try to mash together. So my next decision is whose core am I going to be using? Am I going to be trying to use the body posturing of a chimpanzee or am I going to be using the body posturing of a chinchilla? I guess the best way to go about it is to just start Do it. drawing. When I am drawing something, I have learned to just very roughly sketch things out. I don't try to judge my, my worth based off of my initial drawings because it's okay. It's okay if it looks awful. Um, I am implementing those three circles that I discovered when I was drawing the chimpanzee. So you can see that face shape. I'm just kind of getting, I got those big ears. We can't see the other ear on this, in this picture. And then very, look at this, look at this distinguished gentleman. Yes, look at the way he is sitting. Yes. So I want to draw maybe some joints and then just very, just very rough shaping. Chimpanzees also have incredibly strong, incredibly strong forearms. That's a big one too. Also, if you're bad at drawing hands, like me, and I just add nubs to a lot of things, this is, this is gonna be an interesting challenge because not only do they have hands, they have hands for feet. So there's a lot of hands going on. So I am not offended if anybody tries to do a chimpzilla themselves and they end up drawing the chinchilla version of the feet because this is difficult. Okay, so I see the feetsies, that is the scientific term, it's feetsies. Uh, look it up. 
Okay. So we've got just this splendid little creature. Again, I'm just practicing the shape that I'm going to be using. They also have kind of these brows, but I don't know with my style if the brows are gonna be a thing. Um, and then just kind of erasing the, oh, and there goes the iPad. And we're back. <laughs> okay, so trying to figure out this shape of the chimpanzee. Uh, they have really cute little feetsies that we might be able to use. Okay, so we've got, we've got an idea for the chimpanzee. Cool, awesome sauce, let's do it. So now let us do the chinchilla part. It's gonna be some nightmare fuel, but it's okay. So with the chinchilla, I think a big thing that I think of when I think of chinchillas is that they kind of have this cute little like hand grabbing looking pose and their tails and their ears. And so if I am just coming in here with, I see the rectangle in here. And then I see Also, the amount of chinchilla creators that I follow on Instagram, where they're just holding tiny little signs. Apparently, if you hand a chinchilla something, it will hold it. And it's so cute. Anyway. Is this going to be mixed <laughs> with <gasps> my chimpanzee? You know what? Okay, trust the process. Trust the process. Okay, uh, we're gonna, <laughs> we're here. First and foremost, are we going to keep the long chimpanzee arms with tiny little kangaroo rat looking chinchilla feet? Or are we gonna have chimpanzee legs with the hands for feet and then tiny little nubs <laughs> for the front. I think I just answered my own question. We're going to put our little thumbnails just so we can reference this. And I did a let's make a mashable workshop IRL recently and it was super exciting and I met some wonderful uh, mash makers, mashable makers. I had a, a learning lesson because I was teaching how to draw mashable with digital, but I gave them paper to draw with. And so for me, I have a lot of freedom of pre-planning. And I think that pre-planning is really essential for mashables to not feel super duper overwhelmed. So I suggest that if you are drawing with paper to just draw small versions that like thumbnails, just like really quick sketches, either on the back of your paper, if you are trying to conserve paper or on another piece, just do some quick sketches, do some quick element research for your animals and then go into your final paper. Uh, because if you just start with no real 
ideas to where you're going to be going on a piece of paper, that might be really hard and you might start fighting the process a little bit more than you need to. So do yourself the favor of pre-planning some things and doing some leg work before you go into the final image of when you're going to start drawing. So that's just a suggestion from me. So I kind of want it to be sitting. Okay. But it's going to have tiny little... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's going to have, oh, it's going to have a little head or, okay. Where's its little face going to be? Oh, trust the process, Meg. Trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. Mashables always have some forlorn look to them. I don't know why. I'm a happy person. I don't think that I'm projecting through my mashables. To give myself a little bit of 3D understanding, I'm going to lightly draw where my spheres are and just make sure that my spheres are making sense. <laughs> this creature was forgotten by evolution. It was like, guys, Wait, guys, I don't have, I don't have arms. <laughs> guys, hold on. Wait. I'm gonna come back in and flesh this out a little bit more later, but I want to just kind of rem remind myself now that there is a separation between these lips and just kind of give it a little bit of that. <laughs> Now the question is, do we give it the chinchilla ears or a chimp ear? You know what? It's gonna be chinchilla ear. I feel like we have so much chimpanzee elements in here already that I think we need to put in just a touch more giant ears. I'm going to walk away from it because it's making me frustrated. There's so many other things on this drawing right now that I don't need to focus on the frustrating part. Am I gonna add the eyes? Yes, we are. Is it gonna be nightmare fuel for a hot second because they're not gonna have the little life eye shimmers? Uh, yeah, yeah, it will be. Also, think smarter, not harder. Maybe I can just reverse his ear. Okay, and I want, I need the knee to overlap the tail because it's, we need it to be obvious that the tail is in the background. If you're not over, if you're not really accentuating that knee right here, you might start getting some lines that are converging on one another and you'll start getting really confused and it'll look really, really flat and you won't know the depth of things. You don't know so you want to make sure that you're really obvious as to where you're putting your pieces of the animal. So like the tail is in the background. It is behind everything. You want that knee to come over it to really make sure that it is obvious that it's in the background and it's not a part of the leg or anything like that. This and copy and paste that just in case, like if I really want to go back to those ears, I have it on another layer. So if I'm like, ah, poops, I want to go back to that that version of those ears and I don't want to press backspace for everything. I'm so big thing with the chinchilla ears is that it like scoops in. 
and then his ear starts here. Honestly, this just kind of looks like some like ancient world lemur. I'm here for it though. You start realizing that just like pretty much, I mean, literally with evolution, uh, just animals are mashables. <laughs> like, you know, a narwhal is a, a, a unicorn <laughs> whale. Uh, a platypus is a beaver duck. It's just like there, there are living mashables. They, they exist in the real world. See, and another thing, like if you're drawing traditionally, you don't get that like ability where you can just like copy and paste and move things around and stuff like that. So that's another reason why I really strongly suggest that you do these sketches on another piece of paper to just like kind of plan out what you want to do first, just to save yourself that heartache of having to erase and redraw because you you started coming up with a better idea later down the road. Again, another thing that you can't do traditionally um, that I can do digitally is flip it and good lordy be, this guy is off kilter. So I can just see kind of his eyes are funky. Your mind and your eye get so accustomed to the perspective that you're looking at that it is so helpful to flip your canvas every once in a while just to, to make sure that you are actually as balanced, especially like, I think for me, I noticed that it's it's really off balance on the certain side because I'm left-handed. So I'm just like, I am really focused on one side of the picture and then I just don't even pay any mind to the other side and I fail with that. But this one wasn't too bad. Um, also a thing that I can do is with distort, I can kind of just like slightly adjust the features of it. I can also warp. If I want to just like, I'm like, okay, that's, that's good. I can adjust the head a little bit. Like if I want the head to be just slightly bigger, which I do. And now I can flip it. And now I have to adjust it a little bit again, but it is a lot more balanced um, when you're able to flip it. You're not really able to do that in a traditional piece. So a suggestion would be just to back away and, and look at it or take a couple minutes to just kind of refresh your eyes, look at other artwork, because we get really biased and we start focusing on really specific points of our, of our pieces of art and we forget the full picture, no pun intended. So we've got this thing. <laughs> and I'm here for it. I kinda don't like his tail. Okay, so it's actually not as curly as I was thinking. Okay, so it's a lot bushier than I was expecting. That's cool. And it kinda just goes up a little bit. What I love about this pen is I can kind of like get a, a quick sense as to what I'm gonna be doing. Oh God, this little tiny chicken nugget T-Rex arm. There we go. I was really concerned about this one. I mean, I always am. I don't think there's ever been a time where I'm just like, boom, this one's gonna be adorable. And I think the times that I am the more confident about how cute it's gonna be is when it's nightmare fuel. So now I'm going to just start doing some line work. Commence montage. So fluffy, I wanna die.
Beautiful. Mother, why have you made me? Why? Why did you give me existence? <laughs> because, little chimp Jilla, the world needed you. I don't like to add the whiskers as line work. I like to add them as a color later at the end. So I'm going to hopefully remember that I have to put whiskers. Now I'm gonna get rid of the sketch layer and start just kind of trimming the fat. Paying attention to lines that kind of overlap and make things look a little confusing and, and, and thicken those up to really seal the deal. Like right there, that lip was kind of blending in with his cheek in the background and so it was really hard to tell where his lip started and his cheek ended and so we kind of just want to go in with that we want to connect the lines that i did this is how i make my fuzzies am i giving this toenails you bet your butt I'm giving this toenails. Am I happy about it? Absolutely not. Yikes. And anyone drawing along with me, I hope that you are taking what I'm saying and implementing it on your own Mashable instead of just trying to completely recreate what I'm drawing. Because I already know what my Mashable looks like because we're drawing it right now. But the magic of Mashables is that you can give a room full of people two animals to combine and none of them are going to look the same which is insane and wild and it's just i think that just is really a big testament to everybody's individual creativity that we can all be given the same tools the same references the same inspiration and create completely different mashables so i really hope that i'm helping you and you're learning like with Procreate, if you're trying to do something like that, if you're starting your endeavor with digital art or just art in general and some of the art tips that I'm hashing out to you. But I, I really hope that you are making your own version of the Mashable if you are drawing along with me because it's cooler that way, you know? And I bet your Mashable is going to be wonderful. Oh boy! <laughs> now I'm going to reference this layer. And I am going to get like a nice, I'm gonna go blue and get like this nice gray. I'm gonna continue coloring it in. And I saved myself a lot of hardship by connecting all of my lines so I can do the color fill that I'm doing right now. Make sure that you're not hitting the edges and that you're hitting like a solid white area because if you hit the edge, let's see if I can create it, you'll start getting that like really, it'll it'll fill in the like a, a, a pixel wide thing and it's really annoying. So you wanna click in there. So, um, and we've got our thing. I'm gonna turn the reference off. I'm gonna put a layer above it and I'm going to clip a layer onto this. So now I am just working with this bottom layer of color. And so now anything that I draw in it, it won't escape the lines. So I can, I can make my life a lot easier. And I kinda, because chimpanzees have like this like cute little pink face. Thank you. 
also, because I'm looking at this chinchilla, and a big thing to keep your references available while you're coloring, because it's good to remember, like, I forgot that chinchillas have a very, like, powdery white belly. And so I think that that's going to be a really fun additive to be able to bring into our creature. And sometimes, like, instead of needing line work, you can just use color to kind of imply that there is fur texture there. So that's something that I'll do too. Do that, then you're like, oh, it's kind of fuzzy. And I'm going to do a top layer of darker, kind of bringing that homage to the chimpanzee look. But also, chinchillas kind of have that darker areas as well. So I'm going to very messily put in these dark areas. Now I'm going to do a kind of a Gaussian blur. And then I am just kind of blending these colors in. Just so it's kind of a nice little pop of dark. I love this so much. This is when I start wanting to add like a background color just to kind of like complement our, our little bean. Green seems like a good background. This is when I'm going to do a darker color. So I've made my layer darker color and I've brought the opacity down to about like 20-ish percent. I can adjust that if I need to, but this is my shadow. This is where I'm putting shadow. There are other ways to put in shadows. If you want to recreate the lighting, like the streaks of light, you can fill the entire layer with the shadowing. With my style, I kind of like being able to have a little bit more control as to where I put those shadows. There's ways to be able to show shape without having to do hard line work. I feel like that was a thing that I had an issue with a lot of the time is I felt like if it didn't have a line work representation, it it's like, well, how are people gonna tell that that's there? But it's the same thing with like the, the, the fur that I was adding. Yeah, Sh adding the little extra shape with shadowing is really fun to do. And then I also will come in with the shadowing and just add a couple of fuzzies. Just a little, just a little bit of the fuzzers to kind of show texture without, again, using the line work, but you can still add that. And then I'm gonna come in here and add on top of the, the dark layer, I'm gonna do yellow, cause that's kind of the, the, that's, that's the sunlight hitting him. And I'm gonna do lighter color and bring it up a little higher because sometimes it's harder to see your highlights with this. So I'm gonna just highlight the edges just to give a little bit of a pop. Again, give some texturing with that. I also, my signature little dots that I like to put in on everything. And you wanna be careful with like overlapping your highlights with your shadows cause it can get confusing and it's like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Why would it have a shadow and a highlight? But like right here, I'm just kinda of doing like, this is like a residual highlight. Now we put in the final touches. And just like that, we have made a chimp chilla. Um, I, I think this was really fun. This was awesome. Um, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> making this with me. If you do create this, please post it on Instagram, tag me at Meg's Mashables. I would love to see your versions of this. And again, thank you so much for joining me to make another Mashable. I can't wait to see what the next one's going to be. In the comments, if you wanna let me know what you think you would like to see as a Mashable next, I can do that. I can also just keep doing the random animal generator. I am happy to do with whatever. But thank you so much, Mashies, for hanging out with me, watching Chimpchilla come to life. I absolutely adore this creature and I was very worried about it, but trust the process. So thank you so much. Uh, like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, share this video with your friends. I'm trying to grow a Mashable empire and so I would love for you to help me. <laughs> 
But again, thank you so much, and until next time, I'm Meg from Meg's Mashables, and I hope you stay kind to yourselves. Bye! <laughs> the, 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 the chin chape, the chinchilla ape is... <laughs> or no, excuse me, excuse me! <laughs> It's a chimp chilla. <laughs>